On Sunday night, I ended things with Marcus. I sat him down in our kitchen, managed to not cry, as I explained that I couldn't see a future between us, and he was fully moved out of our apartment by midnight. I insisted that he did not have to do that. He could sleep on the couch while looking for a new place. I didn't mind. But he assured me that he would be fine. He could stay with a friend. I even helped him get a couple of suitcases in his car. I texted my mother and my close friends to tell them that we'd broken up. Everyone was incredibly supportive. Proud of me. Sorry that things didn't work out. I fell asleep watching Netflix, slightly sad about the absence of Marcus in our bed, but knowing I had done the right thing. The next morning when I woke up, I heard movement in the kitchen. I assumed it was Marcus coming back for something he'd forgotten. But when I opened the bedroom door, I smelled breakfast cooking. Oh God, I thought... Does he want to try and change my mind? As I made my way to our table, I noticed Marcus had moved back in. Somehow, without waking me up. His posters were back on our walls, his coats back on our coat rack, his shoes by our front door. As soon as I sat, he put a plate of pancakes in front of me and kissed my forehead, muttering, Morning. Before I could open my mouth to protest, he put a bottle of syrup next to the plate of pancakes and began talking about his day. No, I won't be home until late tonight because something came up at work. Will you be okay? I felt like I was losing my mind. Marcus, I asked earnestly, what are you doing here? Then he looked at me like I was losing my mind. I live here? I decided to say anything else, sitting with my confusion until he was out of the door. Then I began to scroll through my phone, looking for the text I'd sent everyone last night about the breakup. They were gone. The last time I had texted anyone was, apparently, at 5pm the day before, when I'd texted my mother about a television show we both like. I didn't really know what to do after that. The memories of the breakup felt so real, so visceral, but clearly it had never actually happened. Finally, I had to accept the fact that it was most likely just a hyper-realistic dream, my subconsciousness acting out the breakup that I had been planning. Confused, but determined, I decided that tonight I would actually break up with Marcus. And I did just that. He got home from work. I was waiting at the table. I told him we had to talk, and he sat. Much like the dream, he was sad, but understanding, and began to pack his stuff. Once again, I helped, and carried some bags to his car. He was out by midnight. I texted my close circle, I was in bed by one. When I woke up in the morning, he was in the bed beside me. I was immediately alarmed, waking him up with a gasp of discomfort. What is it? Are you okay? He started. I broke up with you last night, I informed him. Why are you here? He looked confused. You had a dream we broke up, Lena? It. I paused. I couldn't really say it wasn't a dream with any certainty. I checked my phone, once again finding the text of the previous night gone. I laid in bed, uneasy, claiming not to feel well, as Marcus went through the motions of getting ready for his day. As if everything was normal. Just a casual Tuesday at our apartment. When he was gone... I called my best friend. I'm going to break up with Marcus tonight, I informed her. And she gasped. Oh, shit. Wow. What's going on? Just all the stuff I've been telling you about for the past few weeks. 
the work stuff, the honesty stuff, you know. Marie made a humming sound. Right, it makes sense. Are you sure you want to end it, though? Have you tried to talk through your issues with him? I scoffed. Marie, I've made up my mind, okay? I thought you didn't even like him. I mean, I had my reservations at first, she explained. But I think y'all are good for each other. And I mean, you live together. It's tougher than a normal breakup. I just want to make sure you really thought this through. I did. Okay. Well, you know, I'm always here for you, Lena. Let me know if there's anything I can do to make it easier for you. The third breakup was a little tougher than the last two, which apparently had both been dreams. He kept asking me why, trying to reason with me, trying to fix things. What do you think I've been dishonest about? He asked me, pleading with his eyes. Well, you say you have no family, but when I try to ask you more about it, you give me a different answer every time. Once, you said that your parents died when you were young, and now you're on your own. But when we were out for a few drinks a few weeks ago, your buddy started talking about the time you tried to set him up with your sister. And speaking of your buddies, how do you know them? Like, where did you all meet? Was it work? Because, another thing, your job. What even is your job? He fumbled for answers. I'm... I'm in customer service, he eventually said. I spend most of my day taking calls, helping my co-workers with their projects, attending meetings, that kind of thing. That's the most I've ever gotten you to say about it. Well, it's boring. It's office stuff. I didn't think you wanted to hear about stuff like that. I thought you liked that I'm mysterious. I did. Once. But mystery isn't fun forever. I need somebody I can depend on. And I'm sorry, Marcus, but I don't think it's you. I helped him move his bags. I called Marie. I even cried, feeling relieved. Certain that this time it was really done. I knew I wasn't dreaming. I couldn't invent Marie's responses that cleverly. The way she'd howled with laughter when I got to the part about his job. That literally sounds so fake, it's insane. She'd gotten out between giggles. That sounds like how a five-year-old would describe an office job. Like, there's no way he's telling the truth, right? I agreed with her. I felt confident I've made the right choice in breaking up with him. I also shot a text to my mum, some of Marie and I's other friends. Even updated my status on a couple different social medias so that people I don't know as well would get the message that Marcus and I were over. I woke up to the sound of the shower turning on, and Marcus singing as he washed. His side of the bed was still slightly warm. The covers pulled back. I went around the apartment, checking each nook, and sure enough, all of his belongings were perfectly in their places. Just like he'd never left. I called Marie in a panic, finally accepting that something was really wrong here. Marie, do you remember our phone call yesterday? She hesitated. You mean last weekend? When you called me about the earrings? No, yesterday. I tried to not let my frustration leak into my voice. About... about Marcus. What about him? Are you two alright? Are you fighting or something? Sorry, Lena. I haven't been checking my phone a lot. If you left a message, I haven't listened to it yet. I was starting to get desperate. No! It wasn't a message. We talked. As in... I told you things, you replied, I told you about how I was going to break up with Marcus, and then later I called again to tell you how it went. She was alarmed. You're breaking up with Marcus? Why would you do that? I hung up. 
as soon as Marcus got out of the shower. I was already waiting at the kitchen table. He smiled when he saw me, then noticed my unhappy expression and came and sat down. Uh, are you alright? He quietly asked. He reached for my hand, probably trying to comfort me, but I yanked it away. We need to break up, I replied bluntly. He looked hurt. Where is this coming from? I've been thinking about it for a long time, and I just can't see a future between the two of us. I want you to move out. He nodded solemnly. Seeing his genuine sadness broke my resolve a little bit. I understand. When should I be gone? I softened. It's no rush. Take all the time you need. You can sleep on the couch until you find a new place. Thank you, Lena. I appreciate that. I'll pack when I get home from work today. I can go stay with a friend. If it's not too hard to talk about, would you mind telling me why? Why do you think we don't work together? By now, my speech was well rehearsed. I feel like I barely know you. We've been dating for eight months, and you're incredibly handsome and charming, don't get me wrong. Nobody's ever been able to convince me that we should move in together before the one year mark in a relationship before you. But you can be very withholding about your job and your friends and your family. And I feel like, even though I know your interests and we talk a lot, I can't really describe your traits. When people ask me about you, I tell them that you're tall, you're funny, you're sweet but I can't really say much else. And if I can't understand you, after eight months together, then what are we doing, Marcus? He thought for a moment. What traits would you like me to have? I made a confused expression, and he clarified further. I mean, what kind of guy are you looking for, anyways, since clearly I'm not it? I shook my head, baffled by the question. I don't know, Marcus. Someone who talks to me about his life. Someone who tells me things freely and openly. I can change. I don't want you to. I stopped him. I've made up my mind. I'm sorry. I've really enjoyed being with you, and I hope you find someone amazing, but it's not going to be me, okay? A moment of quiet passed between us. Okay. And then he was off to work. I texted Marie that I'd broken up with him, ignoring the messages she'd sent me during the breakup, concerned about me and my made-up phone calls. When Marcus got home, we packed, and I sent him on his way. Then I downed a triple espresso. I was determined to stay up all night to watch the sun rise on a beautiful Thursday without Marcus in my apartment. I didn't understand what was happening to me, but I knew he always reappeared while I was sleeping. Maybe if I just didn't sleep, I could keep him out for good. When the clock struck three, I blinked once, just for a second, and when my eyes reopened, he was in the bed beside me, sound asleep. I jumped at the sudden presence. He did not wake or even stir. He just laid there. Marcus, who I'd loved so much. Marcus, who I'd broken up with every day this week. There wasn't much I could do while he was sleeping. I laid beside him and gave in to the late hour. In the morning, I wasted no time. When his alarm went off at eight for work, I woke up too, and immediately initiated the breakup. Marcus, can we talk? Babe, slow down, I'm barely awake. With a sleepy, snuggling motion, he pulled me closer, stroking my hair. 
despite everything, it was nice to be held by him. I wasn't lying about him being charming and handsome. Honestly, had it not been for the way he shut down when I asked him his personal questions, I think I could have ended up marrying this guy. But I'd made up my mind, and I'm known for my stubbornness. When he let go of me, stretching, going to get his work clothes, I stopped him. Marcus, wait, we need to talk before you go. He turned and looked at me with an adoring smile. Sure, what is it? I think we need to... Oh, babe, I've been meaning to ask you. My job is having a big charity event next week. A formal dinner. Would you be my date? Could be fun. I know I don't talk about the office much, but you could meet my co-workers. Wear a pretty dress. Let me show you off. He trailed off expectantly. I was dumbfounded. It was totally out of character. Why are you inviting me to this? I flatly questioned. Because you're my girlfriend? I found my resolve. Actually, Marcus, I think we need to break up. Before the sad face came, the face I was so used to, the face he'd make every time I told him we needed to end things. Something else flashed across his eyes. It was too quick to tell, but it almost looked like he was annoyed or frustrated. Is there any way we can work this out? He asked, sounding very sincere. I love you, Lena. I need you. I was taken aback by the new tactic. I'm sorry, Marcus, but, um, no. I don't think we can work this out. What about dinner? He pleaded. I thought you would like to see my office. Or maybe you want to meet my family? Would, would you like that? He was referencing things I had only mentioned in previous breakups. All questions of my own sanity flew out of the window. Something was happening here. I wasn't making it up. And somehow, Marcus was doing it. I decided to cut the bullshit. What's going on here? He played innocent. I just want to be better for you, Lena. Because I love you. And I don't want you to turn your back on a good relationship just because I've been distant. You know that's not what I'm talking about. He continued to pretend he didn't understand my implications. What are you talking about then? The breakups. All the breakups. He shook his head. You're confusing me, Len. It's too early for me to understand your games. I'll pack my stuff when I get home from work, okay? I grabbed his arm before he could walk out of the door. Don't go to work. Stay here. Talk to me. I thought maybe if I could keep him in front of me, I could keep pressing him. He would crack and tell me the truth. He pulled away easily. So first you break up with me. But now you're begging me to stay here with you? This conversation isn't over, I insisted. He shook his head. I'll see you tonight. And with that, he walked out. I called anyone I could even remotely consider a friend to tell them about the breakup. Maybe Marie was participating in his sick game. But there's no way that everyone was. Right? I called my mother, my father, Marie and I's mutual friends, some college friends, my cousin Louise, my book club leader. Hell, I told the delivery guy at my local Chinese restaurant. I spent my day as if I was a secretary with the sole task of getting the word about this breakup out to everyone I possibly could. By the time Marcus got home from work, I was running out of contacts on my phone to call. This time, I didn't even help him pack. I sat on the couch, arms crossed, 
and watched. He looked pained as I turned down each of his requests to grab something for him or help him pick something up. And as soon as he was out the door, I locked it, deadbolted it, and put a chair against it. I locked the windows. I put cans on the floor that he could knock over if he tried to get in that way. Anything to keep him out. It didn't work. And again, just after three, he magically reappeared in my bed, and his belongings reappeared in my apartment. I groaned into my pillow, frustrated, and held my face there for a moment. Just then, barely over a whisper, I heard a voice in my ear. You called that many people? Seriously? Do you have any idea how difficult you're making this for me? I threw the pillow aside, looking around my bedroom. But the only person there was Marcus, still snoring softly by my side. The hair on the back of my neck was standing up. I felt like I was losing my mind, but also firmly knew that I wasn't. Something was happening, and Marcus was doing it. But how could he be pulling the strings when he was asleep? I tried to wake him up, to settle this as soon as possible. But, as if drugged, no matter how I yelled, poked, or pushed, he remained unconscious. Or, at the very least, he excellently impersonated a sleeping person. I gave in and slept beside him. Yet again. Our new routine exhausted me on all levels. Emotional, mental, physical. I kept breaking up with him, and he kept trying to stay with me. We both tried new tactics. One day I didn't even say break up. I just chased him out the apartment, screaming, and threw all his shit on the sidewalk. It was all back in its proper place at three o'clock sharp. I tried printing screenshots of my text messages, hiding them, hiding something of his to see if it would still be reset the next day. I cut his work clothes into ribbons. I called the cops on him. I keyed his car. I threw his phone in the toilet. I bit him. I was looking for a line. Something he couldn't reset. I didn't find one. After a while... It stopped being frustrating, and started being... fun. I know that sounds sick, but it's not like I was trapped in some time loop. The days went by, and everything I did or said, apart from Marcus, carried over. It was just Marcus that reset. I started to have almost as much fun breaking up with him as I had being in love with him. If you could do whatever you wanted to someone every single day and still know you'd wake up in bed next to them with them doting on you, fully in love, who's to say you wouldn't do the same things I did? It was exhilarating. And it's not like I went too far. I never killed him. I never destroyed anything that wasn't his. I just learned how to have fun in my new situation. And it was fun. Once I was over the hump of initial paranoia. When Marcus and I had been dating for ten months, and breaking up for two, I decided to work harder for answers. I thought he might be more receptive now than in the early days. Now that I was more or less playing along with his resets. In the morning, instead of insisting that I'd broken up with him the day before... I'd let him cook for me, or kiss me, and then I'd bring up the idea of the breakup, as if it was something totally new. He reacted differently most times, keeping me guessing. It was like a game. Some days, if I was feeling really nice, I didn't break up with him until late at night, so he only had to wait an hour or two before coming back to bed. That night, I was still awake at three, I liked to stay awake for the reset, if I wasn't too exhausted from a strenuous breakup that day. 
Sometimes, at 2.59, I closed my eyes and counted down, trying to see if my sense of time was accurate enough that I would hit free, right as I felt Marcus's warmth materialise to my left. When he appeared, right on time, I gently stroked his hair and began talking to his sleeping form. Why is it always three? I mused aloud. What's so special about three in the morning? He laid, mute. I tried a different approach. Come on, Marcus. You can talk to me. I thought we've been having so much fun together the past couple months. He snorted. It could have been a sleep noise, but sounded much more like a stifled laugh. I took the chance to dig in. No, oh, you think that's funny? You're not having fun with our new routine? Finally, he rolled over, opening his eyes. I've been in worse relationships. Now, it was my turn to snort. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. We had a moment of quiet. I kept stroking his hair. I decided there was no harm in asking. What are you? He smiled. Your boyfriend. Sure, I replied. But what are you? He thought about it. Someone who wants to be with you so badly that they're willing to put in a lot of work for it. But why? What's so great about me? He laid silently for another beat, thinking, then sighed. I guess I can always wipe your memory later. I tilted my head. Like you've been doing to my friends. Marcus nodded. You're a special girl, Lena. You're worth a lot to me. You're very different from other humans. People. You know that, right? You're stubborn. But I'm more stubborn. And you didn't let my games drive you insane. You hardly even doubted yourself. You reached a conclusion all by yourself. That you can do whatever you want to me. And it'll reset overnight. You're studying me. It's impressive. Honestly, and it's only fair, I've been studying you too, making sure you're who I thought you were. I swallowed. I'd never heard him talk like this. And who am I? It's difficult to explain, he said. My job, my real job, Lena, is to eat, not people. Don't look at me like that. Energy. It sustains me. And you have a certain type. A type that's irresistible to individuals like me. It's delicious. It's sustaining. It's incredibly rare. That's why I kept you away from my family. They might want you for themselves. But I need you for myself. For your entire natural lifetime. I would say, as long as you'll have me. But clearly, even if you try to end things, you're not getting rid of me. I like you too much. Your dinner and a show, Lena. You keep me on my toes. I didn't know a human could do that anymore. I could hear my heartbeat in my ears. So... So you're a demon? He laughed. What a human thing to say. And your meals? My energy that you're eating, does that do anything to me? Anything bad? That's what's so great about you, Lena. No matter how much I eat, you regenerate it almost instantaneously. You're like a nuclear power plant. And if this scares you, just tell me now, and I'll wipe your slate clean. 
and you can break up with me again in the morning, like always. I could still hear my heartbeat, and it was incredibly fast, but I realized that it wasn't fear. It was excitement. I'm not scared. I didn't think you were. That's another thing that makes you so special, Lena. He pulled me back into bed. I still don't know exactly what Marcus is. Maybe he was right during our third breakup. Maybe I do like the mystery. I think Marcus understands me better than anyone I've ever dated. And while I can't say I understand him, I do feel as if I know him very well now. I know he'll do anything I want. I know he loves me. I've stopped breaking up with him every day, but all I have to do is ask, and he'll reset things on my demand. Objects, people's memories. As long as he gets to stay near me. As long as he gets to eat. He's completely under my command. Maybe I'm being stupid. Maybe I'm playing with a power I can't comprehend. And maybe I'll be punished for it one day. That's the one thing I'm too scared to ask Marcus. If willingly allowing him to feed off of me means that I'm damned. But perhaps, even after I die, he'll have some way to take care of me. We've been dating for two years now, and I can confidently say he's the best boyfriend I've ever had. My mother keeps asking when we're going to get married. Marie has already asked me what colour I'm thinking for bridesmaid dresses. I want him to pop the question soon. I don't want to tell him to, though. It's our new game. The latest game to replace the breakup cycle. How's he going to propose? Maybe, if he's really feeling like playing, he'll propose over and over again until it's perfect, wiping the minds of everyone I tell. Maybe I'd even like it. I just hope he doesn't keep it going for too long. Because, between you and me, I missed my period this month and I don't want to jump to conclusions. But if I do have a bun in the oven, I'd prefer it comes into this world with married parents. I haven't even taken a pregnancy test yet. I think I'm afraid. Because if I don't even know what Marcus is, then what the hell is going to pop out of me in nine months? Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.